This is part three of the Artificial Intelligence uh, Philosophy of Mind section for Introduction to Philosophy. Objections. So we left off with uh, Turing and the idea that she could eventually think, right? And there's some objections to this. So let's introduce Lady Ada Lovelace. Um, so if uh, Charles Babbage is the father of computing, Ada Lovelace is the mother. Uh, Babbage had a created device for mechanical computation and memory storage, much earlier than we might think. It's not that we th it's not what we think of when we consider a computer, but it does meet the ontological definition. It did compute, right? Babbage built something he called the analytic engine, a uh, mechanical monstrosity that could com compute polynomial functions. Lovelace created an algorithm for it. It is the world's first computer program. There, you're looking at it. Uh, Lovelace, in designing the program, had some insight into how computers work and the limitations of artificial intelligence, though she did not have the name for them. Her important realization was that a machine could solve any problem that is quantifiable. So if you could make, if you could take any kind of problem, attach numbers and values to it, a machine could solve the problem. There's no reason to think uh, that this would not be the case, right? And this is something we do all the time without really thinking about it, right? There's literally a statistic for everything in sports, which allows predictions to be made using calculations. And as an aside, for which I think basically ruined human civilization. They try and do this statistic thing for just about everything, right? Uh, politics, like in, in uh, 538.com, like is notably problematic because of their uh, trying to attach statistics to everything. Uh, Lovelace is making her prediction at a time when people are still getting used to the idea that geometry and algebra were related, right? Quantify anything, ask a question, input the factors, and there can be an answer for you. This is problematic for a few reasons, but again, we're not going to get into that aside from my earlier monologue. Turing has a response to an objection Lovelace makes about artificial intelligence, right? In the Lovelace objection, is that the analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. Right? So when using a computer to perform a task, the machine can only do the task because we know how to do it first. We program the machine to do so, and the machine learns from us. The program cannot learn to do a thing that we do not know how to do. Now, it can do those things faster and better than we can, but a program cannot decide on its own to do something. Right? No machine is going to graph without first being instructed to do so. This is because it has no curiosity. It sounds weird to say. It's not an insult-ish. It's just something that's not possible for it. Right? Well, calculus escapes me as a subject. I can use a program to figure out the answers for orbital trajectory because I get a sudden impulse to do so that ever happens, right? The calculation program that I use will not have those impulses. Turing, agreeing with Hartree, I feel he misses the point in the reading of what Lovelace is saying. The two remark that it would be possible to set up a conditioned reflex program in order to facilitate machine learning, but they're being too specific, right? In the 1950s, such an idea of a machine learning to do something was fantastic, but possible. We have programs that do that now. Right, but they have to be told and programmed to do so. Right, we have the digital assistant. Right, This little program lives in my computer. She, quoting, you know, quote, she, unquote, has adjusted to learn certain habits of mine because I use it for searching and various appointments and such. She has a notebook where I can manually adjust settings and preferences, but I rarely have to as it's pretty good about learning about me. Just like, oh, I've scheduled the same thing once a month for the last two years. Like, I'll just go ahead and schedule it first. Fine. Well, she learns about me. She doesn't do so on her own, right? I had to download the program or activate it and begin using it. Turing's response seems to be that we could just set up an algebra computer and then create a reflex device so that it could eventually learn trigonometry on its own. Fine. But Lovelace isn't saying that that's the issue, right? She's saying that if you set up a machine with I.O. ports, memory, and then the machine would decide what it wants, and that's what is impossible. Machine learning is not AI. It's just a program with a bit of flexibility in its programming, but it's still bound to do the task appointed to it. For instance, this is Deep Blue, right? 
the goal, uh, this was the product of an IBM project that had the specific goal of defeating a world chess champion. This is back in the 90s. In 1996, the machine played against reigning world champion Garry Kasparov in a standard seven game match. Deep Blue won the first game, making it the first time um, a machine ever defeated a grandmaster under standard rules. Kasparov then won three games and then drew two, winning the match. In the rematch, Deep Blue had went, underwent some upgrades. In the 1997 match resulted in a Deep Blue victory, three and a half points to two and a half points, uh, draws count for half. And this was international news. Right? A machine had finally beaten a human grandmaster at chess using tournament rules. The issue behind the match has to do with the game of chess itself. While chess is a game of singular calculation, it requires a few other components, such as pattern recognition and intuition. Uh, it was called a blow against humanity because Kasparov was considered at the time to be the best who had ever played the game. Right now that Magnus Carlsen guy is, I guess, the new one, but um, this, was, this was a huge deal, right? Now, his rival, Anatoly Karpov, he thinks he could have beaten the machine uh, because he had a, he has a different playing style. Kasparov is a more uh, computational style, and Kasparov and uh, Karpov believe like, look, I'm um, more of a, a strategic or a, a tech, sorry, a strategic thinker. He's, he, but he never had the opportunity. Kasparov later commented that the machine must have cheated uh, because he thinks it used human input in game two, and he has later recanted that view. Uh, in March of 2016, Google's DeepMind project, AlphaGo, won four out of five games against the world Go champion Lee Sotil of South Korea. Uh, this was also thought a milestone because Go was thought to be impossible for computers, although I don't quite understand why. Because uh, the, ga the game is supposed to rely on a feeling of strategy and judgment, but like that's just chess with different pieces. I don't know. And this is something that the, uh, people thought was impossible. The... the the reason I bring these two examples up is because uh, the Lovelace objection, I think, still applies, right? The machine can't want to play chess. It doesn't want to play chess. It's simple calculator. It doesn't want to play Go. It just, here's the, uh, here's the opera. It's just a calculator. I right? put the white chip down here. We have no issues with ceding our authority to computers for calculation, but when we are forced to do so with a game, it feels different. I don't understand Go, so I've, I've tried to learn. I can't figure it out. Um, I have difficulty commenting on the Soda lost. But what can, what I can say is that every single commentator on the Kasparov match has claimed that what Deep Blue did was merely calculate. Right? A good chess player can see about five moves ahead. A great player, seven. A grandmaster, if they're, you're playing a grandmaster, that game's over before the pieces are set up. But because of the game's history and the apparent need for human beings to make quantitative evaluations of everything, every square and piece has a numerical value. A queen in the back rank has less of a value than a queen at the center square. And this allowed programmers to create chess machines to play the game. In essence, the strategic calculators. Deep Blue could calculate 200 million positions per second, something a human being simply cannot do. But human intuition and pattern recognition were thought to overcome that advantage. And this brings us to the, def the, pro the, the final problem, which is what Searle's definition of artificial intelligence is. And we'll come back to that on the next lecture. I don't know why there's an octopus.